What's up, everybody? We're back. Box office banner and Rodney's back again. What are we I'm about Rodney. to talk about, dude? So, We're talking about Bo's Afraid now. <laughs> Bo's Afraid. And let me just throw you all some context real Bro, quick before we do this. Throw him I, some context. I, went, I got a couple right here. I work a second shift job, so I got off work and got home last night, this morning. Yeah. And I didn't go to sleep till 8.05 a.m. Yeah. My first show time for the day was 11 o'clock in the morning oh, for Evil Dead. So I, I woke up at 9.50 to do this today. So I got an hour and 50 minutes of sleep this morning. <laughs> so so Evil Dead Rise, I made it through, you know, almost fell asleep. But was afraid it's three hours. Honestly, it's that might have affected her. your viewing. I, I should have done both too, first. Honestly. I probably should have done both first. No, um, maybe, maybe not. So I watched about 45 whole minutes of this movie because um, I, I couldn't, I just crashed. Like, But I would be like, I would come back too, and then I would fall asleep and come back too. So my review really doesn't count this time. Next time I do the podcast with Brandon, I'll make sure I had seen it, and I will review it more. But my score is just for this is from what I saw of it. So just context yeah just woke up sorry about that i don't know if you had noticed that? that i was falling asleep while you're talking. To those <laughs> stupid just going backwards with it. though yeah uh man so a little context for me um ari aster i have claimed is like that like there's a handful of directors i absolutely love right now but ari aster is the main one i look forward to s craig zoller's right there too Obviously, Robert Eggers is in that mix. Eggers, whatever you want to say. You're S. Saying. Craig needs to get on some shit. Yeah, dude. I, dude, it's been since 2018. I was just looking at it, and he, the movie he was going to do is not getting funded anymore now. So I, now he's like back at square one. God damn, dude. Release a movie. Um, what other ones? Uh, Alex Garland. Absolutely love Alex yeah. Garland. And then there's another one. It's escaping me right now. Besides the point. Our Astor's right there, and I actually consider him the top of that because – Hereditary is like a 9.2 out of 10 to me. Easily. I think it might be because I'm not into those type of movies. It legitimately probably is my favorite, like, paranormal. Supernatural. Supernatural type. I mean, I guess you could say of, like, Evil Dead as well, but it, Evil Dead feels like a different genre. That's more demonic. This yeah, is... it's weird, but you know what I mean? That classic paranormal, is there a ghost in the house? Yeah, it's not okay, Evil yeah. Dead. Hereditary might be my favorite, even over The Exorcist. Exorcist is one of my favorite ones of that genre. So, yeah, your favorite, like, ghost movie then? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And then Midsommar came out and even topped it. I fell in love with Florence Pugh, oh. and it's in my top 50 favorite movies of all time. So we're talking about, like, huge hype here. Two bangers. Go on, Same just director. bangers, like, I mean, favorite ghost movie ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking best, <laughs> top 50 favorite movie. And, like, what's your third movie going to bring us? You added... Joaquin Phoenix. It's three hours long. I love long movies if they're done and right. Parker Posey too. Yeah, that out was the fucking woodworks. I know, dude. Brought her out, and we got Bo's Afraid. I'm gonna come out and say, the first forty minutes of this movie doesn't mean I don't like the rest, but the first forty minutes I fucking love, dude. Loved it. It's almost hard for me to talk about this movie without spoilers, so I'm just gonna talk around it a little bit. Um, I thought, you know, cinematography wasn't nothing like crazy good, I guess, because there wasn't like, they weren't in like these elaborate like areas that just look fucking beautiful, but it was good. It had the vibes of an Ari Aster film. I really like, and it's just what it seems in the trailer. I respect the fuck out of how ambitious this movie is. I respect the hell out of Ari for doing his own thing here because that he does. This is definitely a movie that's not going to be right in front of you. If you try to watch this movie, just base level storyline, you're going to be like, what the fuck is happening? It's what's it's the themes that are under the surface that are going to catch you. And, you know, at moments I thought that worked. But this movie overall, Rodney, I did not like this movie. So my I'm rating shocked. for you is like way higher than what it... Yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, Rodney. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney. I, at the end of this movie, was hating myself for how much I really? was hating this movie. Uh, yeah, the first... See, I was trying to pick up on all the themes and shit. And, like, the first 40 minutes, the whole time, like, it's more like 
not really a spoiler. That's just where it kicks off. It's a lot of like the inner city. You know, you see in the trailer, it gets hit by a car. That type of shit. That's like the first 40 minutes. And it, it's slow, but it's like good dialogue. The anxiety, you're like, what? There's an actual story. You're like laughing, and it's like... And the themes are kind of like he's out in the city, though. He's got to like run to his apartment real fast before this guy gets him. It's just like this movie's bad shit crazy. And I'm loving every second of it. I love like, him running all right. to the apartment. He from the just gets guy. in. Yeah. And then when he goes across the street, did you see that part? With yeah, the water. And he's like, no. Nah, and he's just like, that's he's not just, enough. He's like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> he's and he's like, out. just throwing change. He's like, I call police. And he's like, <laughs> he's like hang oh, on. No. He's like, pay me. He's like, I am paying you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, 20 more cents. <laughs> yeah, like that whole thing. And then it's like upset. Like that type of shit was working really well for me. I just shook the camera. Apologize. Um, and I love when they're like, there's a scene with like uh, involving notes that I think is fucking awesome. Love that shit. And then it just, it was really working for me in an oddball kind of way. And the overarching message kind of felt like just like how normalized, for me at least, we are to like all the graphic violence and crazy shit that we see in the streets. Like there's a motherfucker you see in the trade, he's just holding a gun, just chilling, he's walking by. There's a guy that's naked, he's been stabbing people. That dude had me rolling. But it all felt normal. Yet one guy in the center of all that was freaking out. It's almost like he didn't conform to society and go with the same goggles everybody else is because at the end of the day, a lot of times we can get so used to things, but if you take a step back, you can look at it like, wow, like this is normalized now, but this isn't that normal, is it? And you can even have try to have this real conversation with somebody, but they're so ingrained in how normalized it is in the real world that they're just like, why are we even talking about this? It happens every day. Move on. And I love that part of it. And in a way, I kind of looked at it like when they were going into his home, his home as like in his mind, like they were invading his safe space and it was going, you know, he's like, Oh no, don't let him come in. Cause the real world was coming in to him and that made him more anxiety fueled. I don't know how I'm on the money with that, how much I am, but I felt like those were the vibes I was picking up on and I was enjoying that. But then after that, the middle of the movie, when he gets hit and he's got the elephantitis balls. <laughs> Didn't see that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's not a huge spoiler. I won't I won't dive into everything that entails. He's just got big nuts, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> there's another scene. I don't want to talk about too many scenes because, you know, we got to leave it for the movie. Basically, everything I'm talking about is in the trailer and little tidbits won't affect the movie. But when he ends up getting hit by the car in the trailer and he wakes up with these people, this part of the movie, basically the middle of the movie, was actually not working for me. It was like... 30% of the time, I was really into it. 70%, I was kind of out of it. But given how good the first 40 minutes were, and given like the 30% was like awesome, and I was like, okay, we'll see where this progresses to. We'll see how this picks up. Also, maybe when I rewatch that 70%, and, or maybe it comes together better once it all ties together, I could be into it more. But it kind of stayed on that same trajectory through there. And then it went into like a play type of situation which we see kind of in the trailer i won't go deep into how all that goes where it's almost like theater type shit which kind of threw me off which like i'll enjoy that type of shit but i'm already kind of like feeling stale i don't want to go into a scene like that and then it picks up for a second again i got really excited about a certain scene and then like the whole final act i won't say what it is I legitimately was just like, I was done with it at that point. How long it was, I was just like, I really like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm just like, I was sitting there saying in the theater, not just now, I was like, I kind of just want this movie to be over. Like, I'm done with it. And then when it did end, I was like, that's it? That's what we're doing? It's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, like, obviously the story isn't going to be completely coherent. There's a story here, but it's all over the place and it's jumbled. You're like, that's not how you story tell. Well, it's not that. It's the themes and the nuances that go on behind the story that you can pick up on. Kind of like what I was picking up on, if I'm even right, but, you know, it's all subjective. You can listen to a certain song. It might not even be about that, but it made, made it that, that way. It made its way into your mind that way for you. So I felt that for the first 40 minutes, but even the themes and messages afterwards, it felt like it was trying to juggle maybe too many because it didn't feel coherent after a while across the board to me maybe on a rewatch it will but i wasn't pulling anything away from the movie other than it just being weird as fuck and long and drawn out after a while 
Like, it got to a point where I was looking at my phone. I'm like, why the fuck am I not liking this? Do you right, think this will happening? turn into a cult classic? I don't. It seems like it can. And there, there's some type of, not just how much I love Ari as a director. It's not like I'm going to give up on him after this. Because I do still have, like, a respect for this movie. Because to go out and make this kind of movie, fuck yeah, Ari. But I knew this was going to be divisive. I just hate that I'm on the other side of that. I'm usually, I knew it was going to be, and I thought I was going to be one of the ones on the good side. You know, the good side. I'm like, that's right, bitch. Killed it again. Y'all want to talk shit about Midsommar? Fuck you. You want to talk shit about Hereditary? Fuck you. You want to talk shit about Bo's Afraid? Fuck Well, you you might have a point. (laughs) Everybody has a bad day at the office, so. Yeah, and it's not even, I've told people, I had some people talking to me in like the A24 group I'm in, like, oh, dude, just like, why don't you put it like that? Like, I don't even know if I'm going to see it now. I'm like, no, go see it, because like, it's not like it's like a terrible movie. It's very artsy and weird and crazy and eccentric and also dull, but not necessarily in a bad way, if that somehow makes sense. It was to me, but like I could see the weird dullness almost work as a charm for some people. But even though it didn't work for me, I could definitely see this working for other people. And I've seen how, there's that word again, divisive. I've seen people talking about like, no, bro, this is on par with those other movies. But for me, I found myself on the other side. And I immediately, bro, like, I was thinking about Tyler. I was like, dude, Tyler's going to fucking hate this movie. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought when I was done. I was like, dude, Tyler's going to fucking hate this fucking movie. And then I was thinking about Josh. I was like, I don't care how far he's came along. Josh is not going to enjoy this either. But Tyler, for sure, will not like this. And I was like, Rodney... It's Rodney. Like, he might be like, see the things I'm seeing. He's like, yeah, bro, what was he doing? But I could also see him like, dude, a 10 out of 10. Are you kidding me? Look at this shit. It well, just, I hate that you only watch like 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, no, off believe me, I'm beating myself up for it too. But it's it's weird. Of the way, the, the it, way though, I was watching you know. it, though, is like, because I would wake up every so often through mm-hmm. it. So. So what I picked up from this like movie, a better way to watch. Yeah, it. so because crazy you say that because it's such a mind trip. It's like if you're blacking out and coming in and out, of it, you're like, what is going on? What is going on? The way I watched it, I gathered it as like it's instead of a it. movie, <laughs> it's just a bunch of segments yeah. of different types of panic attacks, different yeah, types ways, of anxiety yeah. attacks. Which to me, and I knew going into this movie, like oh, uh, this was Ari fuck. Aster, like doing like a an anxiety kind of uh, showcase. It just hit me. We can't but, really talk spoilers, can we? Because you don't know right. the movie. Fuck, right. dude. Yeah. I was like, we'll get to spoilers. and Because uh, that's what I was waiting to talk about, but I can't even. But I was it. waking up and weird things happening. So, like, I woke up in one scene where him and old girl and she drank the paint. And I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're then the say scene, exactly what happened. Yeah, I won't there. go into detail too much on all but, of it. Uh, yeah, there was a paint involved. Then there in was another scene. scene with him smoking a joint in the back seat of a car. Oh, yeah. Where the two girls were like pressuring him to smoke the joint. And yeah. he did. And he got like waves. Yeah, he's <laughs> freaking out. I've been there. And then I woke up and did that. I'm not going to lie. When I woke up, I went. I purposely went back to sleep because every time I woke up, I tried to stay awake as long as I could. And then I would just eventually zone, go back out. But I woke up and it was one of the uh, set scenes or whatever, the the journey scenes where it's like all magical yeah, and like yeah. all that. So I woke up and the screen is orange. There's like this orange being and Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix is looking right at it. I wake up and I'm like, Oh no, too much. And I, I went right <laughs> I back to sleep. Dude. I, I was like right <laughs> waking up to that because every time I woke up, I had no fucking idea what was going on. Which means if you would have been awake, it would have been the same. Right. So the story thing, of this movie is him getting to his mother, who unexpectedly dies, and getting back home. And it's like that's it, though. Other than that, like that's in the beginning of the movie, which I stayed awake for the first like maybe 20 minutes of it. Mm-hmm. But that's they cover all that in the beginning of the movie. And the rest of the movie just seems like that I was watching was like segments of different types of like attacks. Yeah. Which I think is a cool concept, but maybe not for a movie. Maybe him if they gave him like a limited series to this do. This is the definition for me of like you can trim some time off, bro. Oh, mm-hmm. I guarantee you probably could. Two hours would have been nice. Three hours. You could literally take an hour out of this movie and just like dissect it from different parts of it. It'd be all right. 
I would say talk some like some spoilers. Yeah, I can't spoilers, really talk but, much more. Yeah. I mean, I I did kind of come to it at the end, but it was like right as things went underwater. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So and because as soon as I woke up, I what woke me up was a loud sound, and then I opened my eyes and it said directed by Ari Aster, and I was <laughs> like, so <laughs> it's like, all right, <laughs> yeah, but uh. But yeah, so if if I were to score it based off what I'd seen, I would give it a five. Bro. And that's because that's because I kind of picked <laughs> on it a little bit what I saw, and I and I have anxiety. I know you have anxiety, yeah. and it's like the, the couple of scenes that I stayed awake for. I was like, "Yo, I feel this," you yeah. know, especially the paint scene. Even, yeah, there that was scene even... got to me like hard. There was moments, that paint scene was uh, one of the good moments in the middle where I said, like, the middle was, like, 70-30, thir- where I was like, do we need all this? What is all this? What is So happening? the paint scene was, like, in your 30? Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, okay, now we're yeah. talking. But, it, I mean, there was definitely great moments for this movie, but overall, dude, 3 out of 10 for me. It's my mm. least favorite movie my of the goodness. year, <laughs> dude. I, don't, I really don't feel, want to watch it again. Dude, Shockingly. how can a director do that though? Like, like that I, sucks, dude. With Joaquin in it too, but yeah, and that's I, the so thing. So how was Joaquin Even throughout Joaquin the movie? Joaquin didn't really do anything for me. I mean, he's don't get me wrong. He is Joaquin Phoenix. He's fine. He's good. But it's not like he wasn't exceptional. It's not like, like a you like damn. Like it wasn't like I walked away just like oh my god, dude. Like memorable performance. You figure Ari Aster and Joaquin Phoenix, bro. You think you're getting Academy Award level performance? Yeah, like for me, it was just like yeah, Joaquin Phoenix was good. I knew that much. Was he great? Um, I don't know. One spoiler. I get. I don't want to talk about too many scenes, so I go into spoilers. There's, you had had to have seen this, so we'll talk a little spoilers, I guess. In the beginning of the movie. Like that scene that fucked me up when uh he was in the bathtub. Did you see that scene? Describe it. He well, he's in a bathtub. Right. <laughs> and there's a guy above him, like <laughs> trying to stay up. No. I said, well, I, I didn't pre- see that. I pretty at all. much I pretty much already said it. I don't know why it's funny. He's in the bathtub, like losing his shit, and I know where a droplet comes down. And you, in my mind, you think it's like a leak. And he looks up, and there's just this guy. You know how, like, when you're younger, you used to, like, press against the wall and hold yourself oh, up? Oh, yeah. He's, like, up there, like, hanging over him, and he's dropping sweat. And he's just like, mm. And Why? Joaquin, I don't know. Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix is just, <laughs> just looking up at him in the bath, like, like, what are you doing? And then this guy's just like, it's like, mm, and he's like, feet are slipping. And I don't know where the brown recluse spider that was loose in yeah, there, in like, his apartment and goes shit. over his face and he just falls on Walking Phoenix. And Walking Phoenix and him, like, his neck oh and he's just God. rolling around them in the tub. I don't know why it seems funny as shit, though. I was just like, what the fuck? And then the, 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 something about Walking Phoenix's face, like, he's just like, <laughs> like the look in his eyes when he's looking up like is this really happening dude I do I, I gotta say like dude there's some his good character moments. is like really innocent in this mm-hmm. movie like a very innocent character and dude he, there's times where it almost like choked me up like when he cries in the paint scene and then in the car when they're trying to get him to smoke and threatening him with a camera the, on the video and shit like that, like his face, the innocence, like the yeah. I really don't like I don't <laughs> want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like oh I could relate God, to his dude. character because I used to be that character. I grew out of that and I turned you know into a man. But like I was a boy longer than you should be a boy, and he's like that boy that never turned into a man. Yeah. And Poor guy. I, I but can it's all because of his mom. Yeah, dude. exactly. But I, I can relate to that. But like, since I'm like not in that phase of my life anymore, it's kind of like I put that to bed. I don't like watching it. <laughs> but there's moments where I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I can relate to that a little bit. Like freaking out over that, acting this way, which is ridiculous. But I can relate to it. The paint scene. I guess since you saw that, we can talk about that. That scene is fucking. That's and that's the only time I saw that character in the movie. Other than really, the car scene, I guess. Yeah, dude, this bitch. She was an asshole. The daughter of the people that brought him in after the wreck, dude. She drinks paint. She's like, "You drink it," and she's trying to pressure him again. She's like, "Fine, I'll drink it." And the look of her dead body was creepy. Yeah, it looked real as fuck. 
It Ari looked like Aster, she really just drank that pain. He knows how to do it, dude. He like, does. He does it the way she drank it, and they came in. He's just like, oh, my God. And she's like, I know who you are now. Like, losing it on him. And the way she's shaking, and she's, like, pumping her chest. And like, oh, my God. I wonder what paint tastes like. It was the first oh thing I thought God. of. Probably yeah. terrible. And then his, the mom comes in and blames him, doesn't she? Yeah, she yeah. loses it on him. He's got to run, and he fucking knocks himself out doesn't of the tree branch. It, it did. Is it this movie where he is got, it he this got chased? Movie. You watched it today. <laughs> where he got chased, like she went to get a sword off the wall. Yeah. Is that was that Bo is afraid? Yeah. She goes but to get the sword she, off the wall. That's like one of the best parts of the movie, like in the second half. Easily the best part, I think, is that guy that she sends after him. The guy that he was like a war buddy with their son that passed away. Never met him. He you know in like the trailer he's getting shot at and shit. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, that guy, he's just, like, losing his shit the whole time, and that's another person they took in. It's like, he's okay, and he always looks like he wants to, like, hurt Bo. And the rest of the movie, he just, like, pops up, and he's, like, running after him. Oh, my shoot God. Him and shit. That, that's the best part of the second half of the movie, for sure. He goes through some shit in this movie. Yeah, yeah but it, overall, man, I just cannot. <laughs> I can't, dude. I was like, this is like a. I mean, it's at least a low six, or it's not even good. It's like a five, and like the last forty minutes, I was like, "I want this to be over. <laughs> this is a three. God damn!" <laughs> so like That's maybe second viewing. It. I see. I don't want to watch it again. That's literally legitimately where I'm at. But at the same time, how you much I, you're going to how it. much I love the beginning and how much I love Ari Aster, I've got to watch it again. You need to watch it as a three equal thing. Watch. Hereditary, then Midsommar, yeah, and then watch it. Maybe. So that way you got the good taste of those two movies before you go into Halfway through it, I was getting ahead of myself, and I was like, I can already tell this is going to be like Midsommar, because Midsommar is in my top 50, but when we left that theater as we saw it together, I was like, I don't know if I hate that movie or love it. Yeah, that's I, where I was at. I it ended I up being, I absolutely loved it. So like when I, midway through the movie, I'm like... I, it's already settled. I'm going to be the same way in this one. I don't know if I'm going to walk out of it hating or loving it. And then that's why I was confused like during the last like 40 minutes and then with 20 minutes left, where I was like, God, this needs to end. I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, I'm not even going to have that conversation with myself. I do know. I do not like this. This is not good. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, that whole spiel. So funny how that panned out, dude, with Ari, man. But that, that's why it gets a three, though. It's not just the fact that it isn't good. I deduct more points. It's the same thing I do with 65, so I need to do it with this one, too. I deduct more points when I have a lot of hype behind it and mm -hmm. who's behind it. Like, if the movie's going to suck, and I'm like, eh, I kind of thought it would suck. If a movie, I think, is going to be, like, maybe possibly my favorite movie of the year, and you end up shit in the bed, at least for me. Again, watch it, people, if you're still with us and all that shit, and you like Ari Aster. You don't mind spoilers and all that. Still watch it. You might not be that way, but for me, it shit the bed and disappointed me that much. I deduct points for that. And then lastly, just like the people in it and then the length. The length. When the movie sucks and it's like an hour and a half, okay. If the movie sucks and it's three hours, you feel it more. So that's what I think makes it a three mm -hmm. is those things added in for me. Yeah. It's my least favorite movie of the year so far. I thought it had a good chance of being my favorite movie of the year. This might have been my most anticipated movie of the year. So, most disappointing movie of the year might already be set. <laughs> God, that's crazy. Yeah, I'll watch it I need to watch out. it in full. I, I'm honestly excited to. Yeah, that's, and, and that's the I thing thought. about these kind of movies yeah, I love. I know. When I, saw, I heard the like initial hate, and then I saw some people just like, a lot of people, one dude stood up in my movie theater and said, what the fuck was that when it was over? But I'm going to recommend, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but I'm going to recommend it to all you A24 dudes because y'all watch these type of niche yeah. movies. I was like, yes, that's that shit. I was like, people are hating it. I'm going to love it. I walked out of it. I was like, God damn it. I hate it. Fuck. <laughs> Why am I one of these? Yeah, I'm it's very funny. curious as to where I'm going to be at when I watch it in full. <clears throat> funny how it works, so man. I'm an A24-ian. He is from so, the planet. That's right. Galigama. Ha. Can't even see it. Hang on. Oh, oh all that. Uh, yeah, all that shit. Well, that really means it's bye. Uh, bye, bye. Love you guys. Like, share, subscribe if you want some more of this content. And uh, let me know what you thought of Bo is Afraid, man. Do that, please, because I'm curious. I want the good reviews. I want Ari to succeed. I hate that I'm this guy. Like I said, I hate that I hated it, <laughs> but I can't help how I feel. I got to be realistic. I can't be biased. 
Got to be real with my reviews. Did not enjoy it. It's my least favorite movie of the year right now. Fuck. Sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't rate movies at threes that often, so it could be at the bottom. It's low, low. Yeah. I don't think be another movie unless they do like a Children of the Corn again. <laughs> oh, man. That should be the title. <laughs> Children yeah. of the Corn again. <laughs> See y'all again. Hopefully. <laughs>